Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Please rise and join in our opening hymn, number 657, from the Blue Hymn.
mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as Blaze comes forward to proclaim our Lord. Saints in the Lord. 
He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. God, may the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be always pleasing and acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I was in seminary, um, there were four years of rigorous academic formation, and then a middle year, a third year, there was five years total, but four years of 
of academic formation, and in between two and two, we had a pastoral year where we were out in a parish shadowing a priest and, and seeing what it really meant to be a priest and do priestly work. So I was shadowing this priest named Dennis, who is a phenomenal priest and uh, a dear mentor to me, mostly because he was never afraid, he cared about me enough that he was never afraid to call me out on things I needed to be called out on. And he did it in a, in a way that fostered growth in my life. And uh, it happened right away when I met him. He was taking me on some communion calls. Um, I was going to be introduced to certain people that I would then take over bringing communion to, to spell him of, of so many pastoral visits. So we get it to this nursing home. All I remember was it was cold enough outside that I had a jacket on, and I'll come back to that later, because that's where I was called out. But we went to this nursing home, and we went into this woman's room who was bedridden, and Dennis pulls up a chair, takes off his coat, sits down at her bedside, and I just kind of stood behind him observing. How does he do a pastoral visit, a, a communion call? And I was struck that most of the 30 or 40 minutes were not spent in formal prayer. They were spent in conversation with this woman. And it was meaningful conversation. Dennis was, was really present to her. And in the end, finally, after 30 or 40 minutes of conversation, he opened up the prayer book, gave her communion, and then we went to the car to go on to our next communion call. And I get into the car with him, and he turns and he looks at me and he says, Jason, you never took off your jacket. And I was like, these were words I was expecting to hear at the time, and I was like, am I supposed to take my coat off to get in your car? Like, that's weird. And he's like, no. The whole time you were there with me, you stood and you never took off your jacket. It was like you really didn't want to be there. Like you were on to the next pastoral call right away. On to the next thing. And then he threw some good Roman Catholic theology at me. He said, you know, if you're going to become a priest, we believe that when the priest is acting sacramentally, they're acting in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. He said, if you're going to be a priest, if you're going to act in the person of Christ, if you're going to share Christ in communion, Christ's presence, then you need to be present to the people that you're serving. You can't just pass by them. I'm not going to lie, those, those words stuck when I heard them. But they stuck with me. I was grateful he was caring enough about me to be present to me and, and to give some of that wisdom, because as I thought back on his visit with this woman in the nursing home, I saw how much life was opened up because he was fully present, coat off, sitting at her bedside, engaging in conversation with her, and I remember that when we left, she had tears in her eyes in gratitude for that conversation. And he told me, Jason, we might be the only visitors she has today, or this week, or in the next few weeks that aren't from this nursing home. All the more reason, even if it's just 30 or 40 minutes, to be fully present. And I thought about how, yeah, here I was kind of thinking about the next thing I had to do or wondering about the next pastoral visit. And all the while, alongside the road I was on was this opportunity to tap into eternity if only I could be present to it. Jesus articulates that same wisdom in today's gospel. Where a lawyer, a scholar of the law, comes to Jesus, and in a sense was like me in that room. He was passing by. He saw an opportunity in Jesus to, gain, to have this intellectual kind of dialogue back and forth. But really, it was to test Jesus and to justify himself, passing by to, to think, hey, I got this, I'm, I'm good, and, and there's honor that comes with all of that if I can best this teacher in an intellectual engagement. Not only that, but maybe at a different level, the, the lawyer was just passing by because he wasn't just concerned about this life as he was about what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. And in response to that, Jesus draws him into this beautifully rich and layered and wise parable of the Good Samaritan that we're all familiar with, but, but is full of so much wisdom worth mining and reflecting on. Just one of those slivers of meaning being that as we're walking along the road of life, right at the roadside are opportunities to tap into eternity if we're only present to them. And yes, a priest and a Levite missed it. They went on their way. 
Maybe they had a reason we could maybe understand. I mean, after all, this appears to have been a dangerous road to traverse. This guy was beaten and robbed and, and left half dead. Maybe they were scared. Well, the same thing happened to me. If, if I stopped, maybe they were oblivious. It was an outsider, a Samaritan, and that's worth a whole other sermon that I won't give today, who had the grace to stop and be present to the life that was right in front of him on the side of the road being moved with pity and opening his heart to that life that was right in front of him on the roadside. And whenever we do that, as the parable suggests, we risk being pulled in some pretty vulnerable and risky places. As that Samaritan undoubtedly was, stopping on a dangerous road, again, maybe putting himself at risk, but then allowing himself to be inconvenienced in time and money, to tend to the person, even emotionally, to tend to the sick person caring for his wounds, paying for him to stay at an inn and be cared for. He sacrificed his calendar, his precious time, whatever he was passing through to get to, had to wait because he stopped for the life that was right in front of him. And there's another bit of wisdom in all of that, that sometimes even in the most treacherous and messy and vulnerable of places, like the Samaritan who encountered a half-dead person on the side of the road, we still can find that even those dangerous roads and, and dark places, eternity that's been embedded. I think along those lines of a woman served a few parishes ago who sadly lost her only child and daughter to leukemia. Uh, before her daughter was diagnosed, or when her daughter was diagnosed with leukemia, Elise, the mom, quit her job. They were fortunate enough, they were too. Um, gainfully employed parents. She was able to quit her job. Her husband stayed working for insurance and income. But she quit her job to focus solely on her daughter, not wanting to miss any doctor's appointments. Many sleepless nights, many hours spent by her bedside after bone marrow transplant and, and chemotherapy infusions. And in the end, when Emily died, it was tragic. It was heartbreaking. There were tears. And I remember talking to Elise, and she said to me, she's like, you know, Father, it's been terrible, but I wouldn't trade any of this for anything in the world. Because in sitting with my daughter through all of that, she said, I came to learn more about God's love than I ever could have in Sunday school. And then she said, no offense to you, but in any homily that you've ever given. And I said, no offense is taken there. Here on this rough road of heartbreak, because Elise was fully present to the life right in front of her, she tapped into God's eternal love in a beautiful way. I was pulled back into that too last week when I made a pastoral visit to a man who's in the VA hospital in hospice care. His wife's in hospice care in a different facility here in Milwaukee. I got to the hospital. It was warm out. I didn't have a coat on. But I listened to Father Dennis's wisdom. I pulled up a chair and sat by his bedside. And again, in the 30 or 45 minutes that I sat with him, very little words that I spoke were from the prayer. Most of what we spoke about was his wife and how much he loved her and how he wished he could see her physically one last time. We called her on his cell phone, and she answered, and it was beautiful to hear him flirt with he opened with, so, honey, how late were you out having a good time last night? And that's how the conversation started. Just random small talk. But as we talked about his love for his wife, you couldn't help but, but sense this palpable hope that was filling the room. The kind of hope that Colossians reflected at length upon in today's second reading. The kind of hope that was able to ground this man and fill him with a peace to endure all that he was enduring. I'm grateful he had the grace to be present to the life and love that was right in front of him on his hospice journey, namely the love he has for his wife. And because he was present to that, he pulled this priest into that same gift, and I am I'm grateful for all of that. And it's worth celebrating for us as people of faith, because what that ultimately means is that no matter where we are on the road of life that we're traveling and passing by, eternity is not far from us. In fact, it's, it's incredibly close. Often it's, 
It's just on the side of the road. Or as wise Moses reminds us in today's first reading, it's often even closer than that. In our hearts and on our lips. So if you're like me and you're a busybody and you're often always thinking about the next thing on your list or the next thing that you have to get to, today we're afforded the grace, or at least the opportunity and invitation to pray for the grace, to stop every now and then, take off our jackets, pull up a chair, and just simply sit and live and be with hearts open with compassion to the light, no matter how beautiful or broken that happens to be right in front of us. And we come to find a gift in that, of recognizing that when we do that, we don't just tap into some of life. We tap into eternal life. Amen. We rise as we are able to profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in Steve, who has brain cancer, 
Christy prayers for her brother Ken, who just began treatment for his liver cancer. We continue to hold in our hearts here at St. Luke's Parish member Mike, who is now home um, and um, getting some home therapy after a long, long stretch in the hospital for brain swelling and blood pressure issues. So prayers for Mike for strength um, and healing to continue. And on a joyful note, we hold in our hearts Liam, who will be baptized here on July 24th. Robin and Stan will be buried in August. I invite your prayers, either silently or aloud at this time. Hear our prayers, Lord. Answer them according to your will, because we make them in faith through your Son, Jesus, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to remain standing, to be seated, or to kneel, however you're most comfortable praying, as we confess our sins against God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Have God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share that hour with your most humble.
Um, I have gluten-free hosts if you would like. Um, uh, you just let me know when you when you come forward to me. I'll be standing here. Linda will be over here with uh, consecrated wine. There are compostable cups. Grab one. She'll pour a little in, and then when you consume, you can put it in a basket right over there. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory is to lift every voice and sing hymn though at the sides of your pews, hymn number 74.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is Lord of man. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy fruit and drink of new and unending life in Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Luke and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us
may be remain seated for the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food and sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us same courage, the love to serve you with gladness and sinfulness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Time for blessing. Anybody celebrating a birthday this week who would like a blessing? Is this for Wyatt? Emma? Wyatt, will you help me bless your mom? Okay. Will you stand next to me? I'll, I'll kneel down. And your mom's going to stand and face us. And you're going to hold your arm up like this. Can you do that? So we'll bless your mom together. Thank you for helping me. Let us pray for that. You need my arm. Loving God, our times are always in your hands. And so we ask you to look with favor on your daughter and servant Emma as she begins another year of life. Grant that she may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness and meekness all the days of her life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Talk myself out of a job here pretty soon. Why did I take over? Anybody traveling in like a blessing? Any wedding anniversaries? Ellie and Gary? And Gary and Cindy? Okay, how many for you? You always ask that question. Well, how many for you? We'll give them time. Five. Forty-seven and five. Awesome, awesome. Let's pray. Loving God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Send, therefore, your abundant blessings on Jerry, Alec, Gary, and Susie, that they may continue to love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, and that their homes may continue to be havens of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary. Oh, yeah, you In the 47 years, they know. So. Anybody carrying a weight physically or spiritually or emotionally and like to celebrate the sacrament of anointing? Emmy? So Emmy is about a month from due, but she's been having a lot of contractions today. So I thought my homily would help quiet the baby. But we'll, we'll, we'll anoint her. Amen. Oils.
Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, born of Mary. We pray for your daughter and servant Emmy, that she nears the end of her uh, expectancy. This last month, we just ask Lord that you continue to bless her with peace and with strength, bless the baby and with health, and when the time comes, make delivery safe for all. For mom and your baby, and may we all give us the gift of new life. We pray this in all things to Jesus, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Alright. Couple of announcements. First, um, just wow. Um, we had low attendance last Sunday. It was the fourth weekend, and I put the word out, a big ask from the lake up to adopt all 13 of their third graders and provide all of their school supplies. I'm happy to announce that all 13 have been adopted and we've gotten reams of three-hole punch paper already delivered, so I can't wait to tell Tamara at the lake. Uh, I am asking her if she's comfortable with it. I have an email out to her, but like most educators, she's taking a few weeks off now to rest after a, a busy academic year. I'm asking if she would be willing to provide us the first names of the 13 students so we can just hold them in our hearts and prayers and maybe if you've adopted one then if, if I get those names we can just write a little note to the students wishing them well in this upcoming school year. If you have any questions though, if you've adopted a, a student and you're having any questions like I bought the wrong notebooks, I didn't understand the difference between spiral and composition, um, so but I figured that out this week. But questions you can um, ask Christy, her email is in the parish post and We'll guide you through all of that. Also, um, another important announcement, there will be no to Zay prayer this Wednesday. Um, not that I'm not here, it's just I have a meeting of diocesan commitment Wednesday night. So there will be no to Zay prayer in church this Wednesday, July 13th, but we'll resume it on July 20th. Um, also, um, it's, it's bittersweet for us here at St. Luke's. I know many of you know that um, Paul and Adrian and their four or five daughters um, um, will be leaving us. Paul took a job teaching theology at Barry University in Miami, Florida. Um, we're going to celebrate them in a special way next week. A big thank you to, to you all for the gifts you are to us and have brought to us over the last several years. So they'll be having rolls and cake and all sorts of good stuff and coffee all next week. Please continue to hold Paul and Amy in your prayers. You seem pretty chill about it, but moving's always stressful for me, so I'm praying for you guys with peace to, to move an entire family from Milwaukee to Miami. Um, so prayers for them, and next week will be a special, a special Sunday of celebrating them. And we still have coffee hour today, so everybody's welcome downstairs for coffee and some simple visitors. That's all I got. Please rise for your blessing. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is in number 304 in the blue hymn.
6 p.m. We'll have pizza. If you're planning on coming and want to bring a side dish or a beverage to share, we have simple beverages too. You are more than welcome. 6 o'clock in the evening, the church courtyard. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.